We are interested in understanding how a specific brain region works, the striatum. That's a brain region get, that uh, is affected in Parkinson's disease, in Huntington's disease, in a number of those motor diseases. And there are several neurons of those in, in this brain region. One of those neurons, the type of neuron, is called a cholinergic neuron. So that regulates how the stri striatal circuitry works. Uh, what happens is uh, we have a lot of ideas how those neurons uh, function, but we don't know exactly what they do. So what we did was to generate a mouse line where we could get rid of the function of those neurons, or get, not get rid of the neurons, but the neurotransmitter or the chemical mes messenger that these neurons release. Uh, the surprise that came by doing that was the fact that we found out, and, and there was hints in, in, in the literature about that, that these neurons could actually do two different jobs. They can release a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, but they can also release a neurotransmitter called glutamate. And nobody knows what those two neurotransmitters do and if they do things in, in, um, together or they do different things in terms of how the striatal function uh, um, goes. The striatum, as uh, you can imagine, is a very complex brain region. And there are a number of different neurotransmitters, including dopamine, which is, go, goes down in Parkinson's disease, uh, glutamate is another neurotransmitter that comes from different neurons, including those cholinergic neurons. Uh, what happens is that uh, acetylcholine, glutamate, and dopamine have a really special relationship. And we want to try to understand this relationship. So in part of this work, we found that by uh, eliminating acetylcholine, we, we actually boost a little bit the dopaminergic uh, transmission. And uh, we could see this in a number of ways in terms of behavior, in terms of uh, uh, imaging, uh, using a uh, uh, pharmacological MRI. Uh, and, and at the biochemical level, we could see that. So the next step, I mean, there are many of them. Um, uh, we want to understand how that particular neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, functions in a number of diseases. For example, if you do a model of Parkinson's disease and you eliminate, eliminate this neurotransmitter, do the, uh, the model gets worse or gets better. So we suspect that it might actually get better because, in, for example, in Parkinson's disease, those this particular group of neurons, the cholinergic neurons, become hyperactive. So we could actually use uh, um, uh, a target-induced neurons, uh, a protein-induced neurons, to try to decrease their activity. And we now know, based on the work we did in the mice, that doing that is not a problem. The mice do OK. So we could actually use this to target with drugs in the future uh, 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 the release of the neurotransmitter as to choline. And we know that's not going to be a major problem uh, in mammals.